Hi everyone, Raphael Harry here, and you're listening to White Label American, a podcast where we hear stories from an immigrant or two, sometimes more. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of White Label American. Thank you all for joining us today. And before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you for your support. Can't do this without you guys. And you know, you, for everyone listening who is not yet on my Patreon, please you can join us. You know, we always need more support. We're trying to go as far as possible. And if you can't right now, we understand. You can support in so many ways. You can support by liking, sharing, subscribing, giving five stars and a positive review on iTunes, most especially and push us up the algorithm. You can also get t-shirts at vetclothing.com, vetclothing.com. And um, yeah, just put it on your social media, share with your friends, get everybody involved. All right, so today we have a very, very special episode. We're doing something a little bit more different than what we usually do. Um, In honor of Father's Day, I have three dads join me. I'm also a dad. And we're just gonna go through our journeys, you know, we are, we all are different levels of um, fatherhood and they will tell you who they are. One of them has been on the podcast a few times, so he's, he has the record of being on the podcast uh, the most. So you just overtook the person who's been on, well, you were tied with somebody, so now you're officially in the lead. So without much being said, let's meet our guests today. So we'll start with you. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Would you like me to say my name? Oh, please, please. Uh, my name is Caesar Benoit, um, father of a seven-year-old, almost eight-year-old girl. Nice. Mine is almost three. But she, I think she acts like she's 13. Right, she, yeah. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's an 18-year-old. So uh, <clears throat> you live in? I live in Prospect Heights. Uh, been in Brooklyn for about eight years. From upstate New York, uh, Spanish Brazilian background. We we'll tolerate upstate today. What's, uh, what's that? We we'll tolerate upstate. Today. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> and uh, my favorite soccer team is one of Rafa's rival clubs. I don't think, but we not Barcelona. Con- <laughs> we're, we're not consider you guys rivals. Right? So <laughs> we, 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 we'll do that for today. It's all right. <laughs> well, Cesar is my good friend. We've known each other for how long now? I, I can't even tell. Very long time. Right? Very long time. Too long. Too no. long. Way too long. Way too long. <laughs> Fight. We we'll do everything. Drink beer at the same time. So, yeah. Good. good. He's good people. And Mr. Rodney. Hi. Yes. My name is Rodney Jehu Apia. Um, father of a, a one-year-old girl. Um, I've been in New York for about eight years. Park Slope about five years now. Nice. Welcome on the podcast. Thank you. And uh, what's, what's your background? Uh, in, t- uh, in terms of where yeah. I come from? Um, immigrant. Oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. Um, not yet a U.S. citizen. Okay. Uh, I'm a legal alien, but originally from Ghana. Um, but family, you know, came from the Soviet Union. I, actually, I was actually born in Russia. All right. Which gives me a lot of trouble in airports. Oh, but, uh, fascinating. Happily living here now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. So we'll, we'll have we'll, later on. We'll do a separate one-on-one episode with Rodney, and this is just his. Um, let's say sticking his feet into the water, like getting you know, getting the wet. So, the three timer on the podcast, <clears throat> three lowest rated episodes, is it? <laughs> 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 it's uh, yeah. So my name is Mark Butler. I'm uh, originally from Dublin, Ireland, and uh, I'm father to a three year old. Uh, Imogen is her name. Right. So yeah, I'm happy to be back here um, to help contribute and uh, let's have a good chat about being a dad. All righty. So welcome everybody. And I'm also a dad, you know, my daughter will turn three in August, and you guys have heard her once or twice when she's in the studio, but that was a few months ago, and yeah, she, she talks, like, talks a lot now, so I'm like, yeah, you can't be in the studio now, it's gonna be, we don't wanna hear you giving out secrets to the treasures, <laughs> all right. So, let's begin um, with, let me see, I, you know, I got some brand new last minute questions that just popped in, so, 
but they're fun questions. Don't worry. So it's nothing like <clears throat> give me this, you know, sign away the soul of your, your your child to me or something like that. I, I, one child is enough for me. It's too much work, you know. So, um, what is uh? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I read the question wrong. So, what is something that you wish that um uh, you had been told before becoming a father? Like, wait, wait let me rephrase it. What's the biggest surprise that you've had since you've uh, became a, a dad? You know, something you didn't expect at all. Um, for me, it's it's I I've been enjoying it way more than I than I thought I would. You know, like I think it's a certain you don't have an idea what it's going to be like until you, it starts. You know, and uh, every day my daughter's getting smarter, she's getting funnier. She's uh, you know coming out with hilarious stuff every single day, and it's it's just. You know, she she's she almost, almost like my little friend. You know, and it's mm-hmm. it's great. And that's something that I I you know, you read books, you see movies and stuff, and you have a certain comprehension of it. But once I think you start uh, living in it, it's very different. So yeah, I think that that would be for me. Um, I guess I would say I was surprised at how much easier it is than I thought it would be. A lot of it is instinct. Mm. So I started reading all these books and watching all these documentaries, yeah. talking to people. And I remember one time I was at my uh, local soccer bar reading one of these books, like, you know, what to expect when you're expecting and all these kind of things. And, you know, sweating and being very anxious about it. And he said, you know, don't read that rubbish. Just honestly make sure that she's alive at the end of the day and then do it again the next day and again and again and again. So for me, I think uh, what I found is that it's a lot easier than I thought it would be. I thought it would be crying babies all the time and... You know, changing diapers and all this, and it is that, but it's a lot easier. It's a lot more instinctual than I thought it would be. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I would echo your thoughts exactly, guys. Um, I feel like expecting parents are always told scary stories about, you know, sleepless nights and babies crying and how bad it is to change diapers. You know, on that note, that's one thing that surprised me. I didn't think that I would be able to change diapers. I, for me, that was a very scary thought. The yeah. fact that I'd have to do that multiple times a day. I think I've changed well way less than you guys at this point since I only have a one-year-old but um you know it's 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 more fun than you expect and you know it seems to me so far at least over the past year that you you know as a parent you know it's it's crazy to see how much like us our daughter is it's 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 fun seeing behaviors that we sort of can see in each other in our in our daughter Mm -hmm. you know I think I think it's almost like you get the child you deserve almost you know Mm. for for good and bad that's that's a good way of I like that line yeah you get the child you deserve. Yeah. You know, um, it's not like, because like when, uh, before, before Clara was born, you know, we didn't know what we're having, if it was a boy or girl, you know, we just said, you know, we're going to love the baby, no matter what, you know, came out. And um, it, it just seemed like everybody was, the, uh, the majority of the stories or uh, uh, the, the lines we kept hearing were, uh, <coughs> Your life won't be the same. It's it's over. Like you know, fun is over. And like I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. So why 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 do you have another child? Eh? <laughs> like that's like something I want to ask some people. Like you know, there's people who are like three, four kids, but they just always, oh man, you now you oh welcome to the club. It's not you. I'm like, uh, okay, but you know, if you keep if you talk like this to every other person who doesn't have kids, I don't think they want to have kids because it's like you. But yeah, it it was the same for me. Um, I didn't read books. I thought about doing that at first, but there was an experience that um, I very very had an encounter that uh, I don't know who gave her the book, and that book just seemed to be worsening her anxiety because she had high blood pressure during the pregnancy, and it got to a stage. It was like that book just seemed to have the worst case scenarios for everything and i was like what, what's going on you know i i don't get it i, I thought it was when you go search on google that like you're supposed to be seeing all this stuff not in a book that's supposed to be preparing you for uh parenthood and i asked uh namik uh Cesar knows namik uh who's our good friend trouble knucklehead too but um i asked his wife and she said well, why, why are you torturing yourselves don't don't just take that book and throw it away. Yeah. Throw it away. You you guys will be fine. You guys will be fine. Don't even 
don't 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 stress yourself. Don't you you're already stressed off as it is. So why are you adding more stress? So I took the book and I told Verena like we don't we don't need this. I'm not even gonna read it. And after that, I'll just made sure that the communication was with people that I felt comfortable with and people that I respected and people who if even if they were giving me like something that was becoming too negative, I just like, oh, um, okay, thank you. And I just float away. But I just, you know, I, I, I kind of started shielding out myself from the negative connotations. Like this is going to be the end of the world. It's the apocalypse kind of thing as soon as you have a kid. And then as soon as Clara was born, it just seemed like a natural. Like, exactly. I knew what to do. Mm. It's just like it kicked in. And I think it's part of our evolution as human beings. We always had it in us. But does it mean <clears throat> you won't get overwhelmed? Of course, there were days that I felt overwhelmed, but that's where having a team also helps. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but it was the fact that it felt a lot easier than I expected, you know, and that, and that will help me when the tough times will come. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So I was able to get through the, the, the good days. So like, yeah, when, when the tougher times came, it was easier to adjust to those days. But yeah, so I, 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 had, um, I think that was a surprise for me too, that I was able to take to it mm-hmm. and the people were like, oh man, you don't have, you, like, you, are, you, yeah, are you able to sleep? I'm like, I'm not sleeping like I used to, but <laughs> I adjusted in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then with time, you know, the sleep came, but you know, you adjust. You yes. adjust for the good of your child. So, I think. And also on that, you made a point about your life is over and all that. Yeah. You can incorporate your child into the fun that you have as well. Oh, yeah. For example, I like watching soccer games. Well, I can incorporate her into watching that with me. We can take. We can go to a, a baseball game or a soccer game. You know, you, you can still enjoy your life and do things that you like. You just incorporate a little person into what you that, do. That, That's all. Yeah, that that's the that thing. It, it just seemed like all the stories seem to leave that part out, right. you know. And also going to the playground and having kid activities, they can be a lot of fun. Yes. You can make them fun. You can hang out with the other parents, and you can just watching the her happiness makes you happy, you know. Yeah. So, you know. like to me, every every Sunday we do, uh, I go get bagels, and then we sit down and watch soccer every Sunday. Right. And then she actually comes and asks me, "Are we going to watch football today?" That's so, like, great. That's that's mm-hmm. just you know, not yeah. conditioning her, brainwashing her, but just she wants to enjoy it. You know, she enjoys and it. And there was one day where where we were, we were always watching Premier League or watching you know Syria, and then uh, she asked me one day, "Oh, do do girls play soccer?" And I was like, "Yeah." So like we looked up ESPN Plus, we found college soccer, and we were watching college soccer. That's so great. this is you know, it's it's just she can do anything she wants to do, you know. Right. But like you said, using your own experiences and using your own likes. Mm-hmm. I bought a. a you know, the Super Nintendo, little SNES, they had like classic ones that came out maybe five or six years ago. Oh. Like, and I have Super Mario and it's got Metroid and Mario Kart and stuff on it. So I haven't even opened it yet. I, I bought it purposely for her so her and I can play, <laughs> you know, okay. the games that I used to play when I was small. So, yeah, yeah just to share our interests, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all right. So now that, that brings something. Um, I think this will be the next question I, I'll go with. So now that you're a father, what is something that you wish your dad had done differently that you are now doing on your own with your kid. It's a little bit on the serious side, I guess. It's hard to answer this question without seeming like uh, being critical. Um, I am critical on my side because I, I, I grew up without a dad. <coughs> yeah, and, 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 Likewise. And, and and no parent is, is perfect and, and I don't imagine that I ever will be perfect. And, mm-hmm. you know, someday my daughter might be on a podcast talking about what I could have done differently. But I think a lot of what I think about when I think about my childhood was the fact that my parents were both working. Mm. And in Ghana, you know, everyone has a sort of help at home. Yes. So a lot of my early years were spent, you know, interacting with house helpers, um, my grandmother, extended family who lived with us um, from time to time. And, you know, in this pandemic situation, especially, I think I really enjoyed all the time I've had, you know, you know, working at home, you know, being with my daughter, seeing her develop. And it's been very rewarding. Um, and so I don't know that I, you know, I would not have remembered the stage when I was her age. But I, I think I think uh, it would be a loss that my dad 
perhaps uh, would not be aware of um, not having had spent as much time in the early ages. Uh, for me, I, I was very lucky. I think my, you know, my dad had a had a good upbringing when he was, you know, uh, stability is one thing that he didn't have, and that you know he was born in Ireland. He moved to Bristol and Bath area in with his with his well, my my grandparents, um, and then my granddad uh, packed hey, the family is it, is it up Bristol in England in, in the UK, yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> and uh, he packed the family up in. I think 1965 and like right you know they had had, had nice house they had two cars in the driveway you know back in the 60s and he packed everyone up and he's like right we're gonna move to america and we're gonna do work in, in america so like it's it's you know my dad had that stability in that family life and then it was just taken away so they moved to burbank they traveled across america he says he remembers being in the toys r us that was in Times square in like 1965 so that toys r us that was there up until recently i think oh, it's wow. a old navy now but when i moved over here in 2008 i could go to that same Toys R Us, he was there 40 years before that. So, like, that's, again, that's a cool thing to, to me. But, uh, you know, so they moved to Burbank. They live in Burbank. He, he obviously got to spend a year or two there and play baseball and, you know, got to enjoy that side of life. But, you know, he moved back to uh, Ireland then and he had to live with his granny because they didn't have house anymore. They didn't have cars anymore. So that was something that I think when he grew up, he wanted a balance and a stability which he didn't have when he was growing up. So to me, that was that was something that I, I, I've been very lucky in that I, I don't really have anything poor to say or anything anything that, that, that I was deprived of. I was It was almost like, I'm going to give my son everything that I didn't have, you know? So that's, I'm, I'm lucky okay. in that respect. So okay. so there's nothing you, you, you're doing different from that? No, I don't think so. Again, okay. he's a good example, you know. Uh, I think, you know, he he's the most chatty person in the world, but he would never think that he was. And he he's he <laughs> always he always I told me chatty people. You know he like he, he always told me that like he's <laughs> like oh you're almost, you're so much co more confident than I am. You're so much more confident than I am. And I'm I'm not. I'm just leading by the example that he always said. Like he'd always talk to people in restaurants or he'd be talking to, you know, if you're in the doctor's office waiting, he'd always be chit chatting with people. And that's what I tried to bring as well. You know, I I you know. We'll probably get to this later, but for now, like, my philosophy is, uh, it's two things in life is, one, be kind to people, and don't take shit. Mm. Well, that's, that's, it's a simple way, but that's going to, I'm going to teach my daughter as well, so. Mark has t talked a lot more on, on about his dad and his uh, grandfather um, in his episode, like episode, uh, which is episode 57, where he covered a lot of that. And um, one thing I'll say about this question is, it's not always about just the negatives and you know it, it can be both negative and positive but you can still be doing something different from mm -hmm. what uh, your your father in your father with your relationship with your father you can do something different from that yeah uh, like i you know i think i think like my grandfather's philosophy was probably like you know listen once you get to you know you're on your own figure it out yourself mm -hmm. whereas my dad was like he didn't have that support so he's like i'm not gonna let my son not have that support so again it's probably a generation back question but yeah you know okay again it's an evolution i think we're always trying to get better so yeah so that's another yeah. way of looking at that <coughs> question too yeah you know, see i'm learning too <laughs> <laughs> so. well i grew up without a father mm -hmm. so i would think that just being present <laughs> for my daughter's yeah. uh childhood right there off the bat is much different um i got to meet him a, little, a bit later in life and um, he was a great guy and I wish that he had been around much earlier, but, um, you know, that's just the way the, the ball bounces sometimes. Mm. And I had a, a strong, uh, mother figure in my life who acted as both mother and father. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that's the only thing I can say is that I didn't really get any, anything from my father cause he wasn't around. Yeah. So that's I, I wish that I had gotten, you know, advice or even the example of being a father from him. Mm. But I think the greatest example is that I'm present and I'm here and I'm a father. Yeah. You know? So uh, there's the, some sim similarities between yours, uh, between you and me. And where it, where it differs is that I never got to meet mine. On, on the, I found out like a year later, a year after his death, that he had died because someone decided to keep that away from me. Wow. So <laughs> that's tough. So yeah, but uh, I I had always because for a period in time, I always said I didn't want to have kids. I wasn't interested in. I was like, I'm not going to repeat that cycle because I'd I don't know if it's confirmed, but I'd heard a story. There's a version that said my biological father or the person who they claim is my biological father 
Um, he was also like my situation where he grew up without a father. He wasn't mm -hmm. claimed by his dad. So I said, I, if I ever had a child or children, I wouldn't put them in that situation. And then later I said, I don't even want to have kids. It doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm not down with it. And then I met somebody who I felt comfortable enough to go on that path with. But the moment I decided I'm going on this path, I said, even that, I've even told Verena multiple times that if for any reason we go separate ways, which I'm not against, you go into a relationship, relationships can end. My relationship with my daughter is not supposed to end. It will be there. I respect her space. She can be a solo, uh, a lone ranger, like or a lone wolf. Like I, I tend to have lone wolf tendencies sometimes. So if she has that and she wants to go out and do her own thing, she's fine. But I'll always be present. I'll be a presence right. in her life. And that's one thing I've been able to give her. And I was happy with uh, uh That's why it was a lot easier for me to be a stay-at-home dad and like pull back and say, yes, um, even though I fought against the stigma, I fought against... Uh, it, it created a mental issue for me because you, you don't grow up with something like that. You're not used to men being a stay-at-home dad. It's mm -hmm. something that's like, well, what's wrong with him? Why can't he, you know, you go, you go make the money, bring money, you know, that kind of thing. And um, But I've had other men who come from backgrounds similar to mine talk to me and they have great careers going on, you know, great professionals, and they're like, man, I wish we could trade. Because I I don't get to see my daughter I leave the house like six a.m. You know I work in a big bank I work in a big financial firm and I don't come back until she's fast asleep. So mm -hmm. I'm not there. I don't see my child growing up. And before I know it, my child is four years old. Before I know it, my child is six years old. And when one of them said that to me, I, that 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 was like a big moment to me mm -hmm. because. I, I never looked at it that way. I never thought about it that way. So I didn't realize that just for the fact that I'm there for her, take her to the playground, even if I go to volunteer, sometimes I take her with me to go volunteer. Just little things like that was already um, doing something different from mm -hmm. what I had because I didn't have uh, a father. So I didn't know what... To, you know, that was another reason why I was afraid of, like, you know, going into this um, journey, taking this journey, because, you know, you don't have a good, you, you, technically, you don't have a good, uh, you have the good example. And the uncles who were technically my, with the closest heart to a father, you know, in acts of desperation, like, okay, I'm going to, this is the person I'm going to go with. They were saying things that you overlooked. And then the older you get, you start looking and you're like, yeah, I, I don't want to be this type of person. This is not the type of person I would like to be mm -hmm. to my kids because I start realizing how I was treated different from their own kids. And I'm like, yeah, if tomorrow I have to have um, a child who I'm the ward of or I, I decide to adopt a child, will I treat that child different from the way I treat Clara? No, if you're under my roof, I treat you all the same. So it's something that I do you know, I've had to come to that uh, realization and um, own it and say, this is how I'm going to be going forward. And for anyone listening who has um, had an unfortunate um, past where you didn't have a father and, you know, maybe you've, you're feeling like, oh, man, I don't think I can do this. I'm like, that shouldn't define you. That shouldn't make it feel like uh, you can't take this step forward. Some of us are lucky to have experienced uh, our dads uh, early in life. Some of us um, are lucky to have met them later on and had a good reunion. I know people who met theirs later on and it's like the reunion was still like war. Like, oh, I wish I never met you, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I always sometimes ask myself that question. Like, okay, what if I met mine before he died and he was, you know, he came at me in a different way and he's like, we need... This is how you need to be. And I'm like, but I'm ready. I have my own opinions. I have my own way of doing things. Would I just throw it out the window and say, okay, because I just want a relationship with you? No. I would have, because by then I was already like, no. I knew the word no existed. <laughs> so I started using it. So um, I don't regret not knowing my dad. It wasn't my of my doing. I didn't have anything to do with that. So, But I'm glad that I'm able to give my daughter as much time as possible. And... Um, although sometimes it hurts when she says, I don't want to watch football. 
Get, put put a, put a, put some cats on. Put some uh, put Miles Morales. I was like, God, please, man. <laughs> I was trying to watch this game. You know, but, uh, if that's what she wants. That's what she gets. It's so hard to watch just a full ninety minute game now. <laughs> I, it's boring to them. Like, what is this? <laughs> a bunch of people just running around kicking one ball. Not for me. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you, you're lucky. You got lucky. <laughs> yeah, the, the phase will come. It will come. I, I I I don't I'm not gonna be optimistic on that to anybody's kids anymore. I stopped because when, when mine was what when she when she was about four, five, six months, she was woo, cheering every time we watch soccer together. She said, "We we'll go to bars." Yeah, was, and then yeah, all of a sudden, mm. then TikTok <laughs> becomes a thing, and then YouTube. She, and then, she's like, mm. <laughs> "Baby Shark." I'm like, "How do you even know Baby Shark?" Mm. No, 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 mm. no. Uh, uh. She's like, uh, "I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch soccer today." I'm like, "I never use the word soccer around you. Like, you find it out." I don't want to watch soccer today. I want to watch something else. I'm like, oh, "Man, this is boring." Nah, but nah, but yeah, with with that, I'm like, yeah, because I, I, the household I grew up in, as a kid, I couldn't say nobody gonna watch soccer today. We want to throw this kid out. <laughs> <laughs> you got no vote. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's no vote. Go, go go outside. Go get out. Get out here. Like, what, what do you mean? Want to watch cartoon? Like, I don't, like man, who who are you again? Who, who, hmm. What what do you pay for in this house? <laughs> No vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that was a little heavy, but we you know we still continue. You know, it's the beauty of fatherhood. Not everything is just going to be um, cheerful and going to be just uh, colorful. There's days where you're going to be down, and there's days where you're know, going to be high, and you know it's not an easy journey. That's the point I'm trying to make. And, you know, I don't want people to just, because there's some people who oversimplify it. And there was a day I was talking to one of my neighbors. He's also, uh, my neighbor who's, who's a dad. Um, his kid is about three, four years older than Clara. And um, he, I, I told him that um, I can empathize with people who who are overwhelmed when they have a kid and they, they go drop their kid at like a, a hospital or <coughs> at a, a fire station and, run away you know we always we've all had stories about that and way earlier in my life i used to be like man fuck these people <laughs> like man you know they should, they should be arrested they should be dealt with you know at one point in time i was that person i used to be that person but even before i had clara i was beginning to make that change and after um, clara came into our lives i began to understand how people are not really prepared for parenting and when the overwhelmness comes you don't know how to react your brain can just you know because there's mental issues also in there and what are you gonna do there are people just i don't want this baby to die so what i just go drop it where i think the baby will get sustenance or something and because if you've if, if ever seen some of the stories of uh, families that uh, where the child found the parent later on in life, you just see that most of them is just an apology that's coming from the parent, and some don't know how to even vocalize it. Like there was something wrong with me at that stage of my life. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's not the type of person you just want to pick up and throw in prison. If the person had a drug habit, that person can't be taking care of a baby at that point in time. They know this is not the right thing. I should be. I, I can't. I can't. And but we don't have that. It's like we don't. It's like you must have the baby, deal with the baby, and that kind of thing. So I think that's one thing that also changed in me too. But as, as uh, that I, I have owned as being a dad that I'm. You know, like like some people get mad when I say that. Like what you you empathize with people who dump their babies. I'm like they're not they're not really dumping up. It's not like they took the baby and threw the baby in the river. Yeah, but. I can understand what can drive people. I'm not saying I'm encouraging it, but I can understand because you know, until we create a system where it is, yeah, it, we can accept. We can the people have that. Um, what the, what was what the word I'm looking for? Like you, you can, it's easier for you to like say I'm drowning in this. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to deal with this, and then the system that like, okay, we can take we can take this off your hands until you feel better. 
and then yeah, come some back. Some kind of social support. For yeah, social parents, support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a big thing that changed in me. Otherwise, I probably would have been like, get them, <laughs> lock them up, kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, that was me. So I don't know if anybody has anything to add to that. From, um, yeah, I, I mean, it can, it, you know, on the social support and, and getting overwhelmed, I think, you know, to your point, it's it's often more complicated than somebody just being cruel hearted. Um, mm -hmm. It can actually be an act of kindness sometimes. You know, if you know I'm not the right person to be raising a, a child, you know, whether or not you're correct. I, in that moment, I, I believe the majority of these people feel that they are not the best person to take care of the job and that maybe somebody else could do a better job. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, on the social support, you know, over the last year, I've just realized how isolating it can be sometimes to be a parent. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the struggle is private, it's internal within the family, you know, the lack of sleep, the the need for for external help, how expensive that can be sometimes. Oh, yeah. Um balancing that with your, you know, you know, just maintaining your your obligations to other people in your life, your friends, you know, to yourself, to your partner in terms of intimacy. Um it's, it's just a it's a tough time. It's a tough time. Uh -huh. But it's still more fun than it is tough. Oh yeah. But it can be tough. Oh yeah. Anyone got into that? I, I think I, I think when you like you say, you become a father, your opinions on certain things change from what they were before you had a child. You know, so like you said, empathy, you know, understanding, um trying to to offer support to people, like, you know, and, and, and I think like this, like been having conversations and, and difficult conversations or or conversations make people think. You know, like you said, some things aren't as as simple as black and white. Yeah. So, yeah. So, as part of the conversations, have you ever had a moment where you felt like you weren't good enough as a dad? You know, you 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 start judging yourself in a in in a negative light, and how do you come out of that moment? I mean, I can answer this easily because it's almost every day. <laughs> every day that I'm a father, I question whether I'm making the right decisions for for my daughter. And I know, like we've talked before, I don't think uh, I'm perfect as a father. I don't think there's a, such a thing. But um, yeah, often, often I'm questioning whether or not I'm making the right decisions. Am I doing the right thing for her? How do you get out of that? A, a deep breath, seeing your, your daughter, seeing your child, and how happy they are, or how gleeful they are, the progress they've made. I think my daughter is older than your guys, so I've done it a bit longer, but um, she's rounding out into this really wonderful little person um, who's empathetic and, and kind to people and sweet and happy. That's what pulls you out of uh, a dark place sometimes because, like I said, it can be really, really difficult at times to just to balance out whether or not you're doing the right thing yeah it's it's not easy sometimes yeah for me uh it's it's been a it's been interesting to think of of the last year um at this and and i'm i don't feel confident yet um entirely as a father i think i go between two extremes of on the one hand when my daughter was just born my mind could only go towards the the worst case scenarios you know yeah. oh daughter is going out for a walk what about cars on the street what about you know this or that or a wild dog or something you know thinking of you know being hyper Care, you know, uh, protective. Yes. Which I think maybe is hormonal, maybe it's instinctual, maybe it's necessary. It's um, all of it. Yeah. But on the other hand, sometimes I, f I, f I reflect on, on a day I've had or, you know, with my daughter and thinking to myself, am I putting too much pressure on this, on this child? You know, mm. I think if there's one thing I need to correct for as she grows up is to encourage her to be the best expression of who she is, but then to not hold a very, uh, a very high standard to her, you know. And I think that Part of my upbringing was was one was one that was very strict. Academ academia was, you know, yeah. I often felt like I, if I did well in school, then I'd have the approval of my parents. Um, you know, it was drilled into my head that that was the most important thing in life. My duty was to get good grades in school. It's and I I can see the benefits in my life, and I can see the downsides from an emotional standpoint. And I think uh, I I see those tendencies in myself. You know, already thinking my thinking of, you know, on our way here, I asked Mark if his if when his daughter started walking. And I reflected on it a few seconds later, think to myself, like, why am I already having this expectation of when my daughter should start walking? Mm. You know, I should relax a bit about these things and, yeah. and realize that, you know, 
they're they're you know just you know tend to the garden let 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 her grow rather than uh you know try to force some outcomes that i think are good yeah i think i think you know to me it's like things happen when they're ready you know and and i think that's a good point you said about oh well you know if she's not walking by or she's not you know walking by 13 months so is there a problem is there, is there something with her development or is she not talking by a certain amount of time oh god is there something wrong with this but mm-hmm. you know you know excuse me, maybe you can put more light on it but they'll do it when they're ready you know in a lot of cases and and you know like I, i'm trying to be you know and, and i was thinking about what you said there as well about how when you're like anxious you're like oh god when they're getting you know when they're going for a walk or whatever like with me you know she has a scooter she rockets up and down on that scooter you know mm-hmm. and but I always told her, like, when we get to the corner, we stop and we hold hands, always. So, and sometimes I'll be going to walk before the light is, is green or before, like, the little man pops up and she'll be like, Daddy, you have to stop. We mm-hmm. have to wait, you know. So, you know, and then when she's riding her scooter, she knows to stop well before the corner. And she stops well before the corner. So I think it's just, you know, you tell them what your expectation is and then you make sure that they hold to that, you know. And, and again, like you say, it's, sometimes it's not easy. I don't... Negotiating with a three-year-old, like if you can negotiate with a three-year-old, you can negotiate because they they don't know, they don't understand no where they don't Ooh. understand like it's it's. I spoke to one of the guys in work and he's like you know, high up guy and he negotiates with builders all the time and he's like if you can negotiate with a three-year-old, you negotiate with anyone, you know mm. it's because uh, that, they don't understand no that yeah, they want their ice cream or they want skill. their their lollipop and they're not gonna not take no for an answer. So it's they just, will keep coming back. Mm. Yeah, that's so. that's the first union protest you face in your life. <laughs> If you want to be in management, there you go. Luckily, they have really short-term memories. That's so if you good. have like a little red button, they yeah. like focus on that, <laughs> yeah. and then it's over with. Yeah. <laughs> I I had the expectation we're talking about that is um, with reading. Yeah, that was something I was that going to bring that up. Yeah, that really really stressed me out for the last year or so, and her being behind in her reading and being not being able to you know pronounce just very simple words like stop and things like this and it would make me so anxious and so nervous to see like other children in her class already reading like harry potter Mm -hmm. (laughs) and she couldn't even read like you know go spot go or whatever you know but luckily this year through the pandemic her her mother has had way more time to you know pay attention to her teaching and her education and she's skyrocketed so just like you guys said it's everything happens in its due time yes it's we have our expectations on them and all these type of things, but you you really do need to sit back, let them be who they are, and then they will get there in their own time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's at six years old that they're reading Harry Potter or at <laughs> eight when they're reading William Shakespeare. They will get there. Yeah. You know? uh, funny thing, I was, uh, what, 12 when I read my first Shakespeare? No, uh, first um, Sherlock Holmes. And that's what got me into reading novels i never i never cared about reading those and then i was like this book doesn't have pictures in it you know <laughs> i was told go read it make sure you, you read everything and then we're going to ask you questions after that and i was like oh i read i read it twice nice. like, oh, this, is, like, this is interesting i thought i, thought I won't be able to read a book without pictures <laughs> you know, I had fun. but um that that wasn't an example of reading at your own pace or at your own time that's just a fun memory that came up but um for me, I, I think that's one thing that I kind of grasped early, the learning uh, process, like um, the, my daughter will figure things out on her own or at her own pace. Um, because I'd been around people who it seemed like a competition. And like, oh, my kid is almost two years old. And some were not saying it for the, to brag per se, but you start getting that vibe in the room like this person says oh my kid is doing this already at two this one my kid is doing this at three and it felt like remember, all eyes turned to me and i'm like oh, um no okay mm-hmm. so yeah I, I gotta find something to say too right and like oh, well my kid knows so, um she can into the spider verse right <laughs> yeah exactly so, yeah does your kid know that no she knows she can't even follow the spider-man so something like that but you know but it, it, there were times where I, I find myself like pushing her and i ask myself who am I doing it for? Am I doing it for myself? Am I doing it for her benefit? Or am I doing it to impress others? And every time I ask that, it's kind of it's kind of one of the ways I deal with when that negative feeling comes up, like I'm not doing good enough as a dad. It feels like, oh, uh, 
you know, these are that person who's a stay-at-home dad or a stay-at-home mom. They've taught their kids like four languages or this and that. I'm like, fine. Well, I don't know what their teaching process is, but I know that my daughter, before just around when she was two, she could sing um, "Whiz Kids Joro" from beginning to the end. I'm there. I'm like, I don't even know that song, but she would be there singing Joro, Joro, dancing and singing, and then she would sing "Spice Girls" if you wanna be. And I'm like, okay. And then now, yesterday I played that song. She was staring, and looking at me like, "What the hell is this?" I'm like, okay, now she's they it, forget it's gone. <laughs> yeah, she's moved on to something else. But just from there, her vocabulary was changing, and she was picking up words. And then now she's all about into the Spider Verse. She can quote almost all the lines. Then she's just like, "Hi, I'm Peter Parker." And, I'm, and she just start telling you, <laughs> and then you know, Peter Parker, this Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy, and I'm like, okay. But that is also learning because her vocabulary. Yeah. But if all the learning is limited to only just books, you must only read through books, you must learn through books. I'm like, yeah, but there's so many ways you can teach in Finland. Way before I even thought of, about becoming a parent, I posted this on my Facebook a long time ago, and thanks to Facebook, Facebook memories, I, re- I realized that. Um, in Finland, they don't even teach kids, um, they don't test kids. I think they, they just let them play in their kindergarten, in their preschool, I think up till the age of five, six, or uh, seven, something like that. But it's like fun, fun. And within that, the only thing they introduce them to is music and different sounds. Mm-hmm. And then they see what instrument the kid's gonna pick up and just start having fun with. But it's not like you got to turn into a prodigy or something, but it's just like, whatever you like, have fun with it, go with it. And it's part of a learning process, which they've done experiments on, they've figured out um, that, the it's also the brain is wired in a certain way, like the kids who learn a certain music instrument, are they able to pick up languages and certain skill sets? And I'm like, that's also learning. Yeah. Well, I posted that article long, long time ago. I'm like, Damn. <clears throat> people are like, are you gonna have kids? I'm like, for what? I've just posted it, I found this interesting, I shared it. Yeah. But it also, when uh, my daughter was born and you know, the, and any night where I woke up and I'm like, okay, let's, let's leave the bedroom. I'll go to the living room and turn up music. And I'll be like, okay, well, not like, you know, I put on like Afro beats, I can put up, uh, not what you call Afro beats today, I'm talking about the classic, the real Afro beat. Put on classic, but whatever I felt like, I just put whatever. And with time, she started like, you know, sometimes she just, you see her head moving, and then the older she got, she was just, you know, and picking her own thing, but she's learning too. And now she has her own dance moves that she got going on, which is good because I don't want her dancing like me because they're going to be like, you're too old. For, you, know, you, you dance like an old man kind of thing. So, but yeah, all, all that helped to calm my nerves and you know calm me mentally um, every time I felt like I was, that, that failure, that thought of failure started creeping into mm-hmm. me because it always, it's always there. It's always there, like Cesar said. It's like a daily thing and the, the, I think all it needs is just for you to allow it last longer than a minute. And then it starts to spread into, oh, but you, you didn't give her food at 12, no, 12 o'clock, exactly 12 o'clock. You waited till 12, 10. That's a bad, bad fatherhood. I mean, you, maybe, maybe you act like your dad. Maybe your dad did that. And we're like, wait, but what? what? Then, you start, then, then you start letting your mind play with you. And then before you know it, you're opening up different portals into who knows where. And then, you, you end up, but you don't need to go that far. You know what you're doing. There are going to be days where you make one mistake. Like first time I took Clara out on my own, I misjudged the weather. I didn't co- put on enough coats. And I was, well, we are re- we're already on the train. We're going actually to Harlem. And I was like, man, this is, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody on this train is looking at me. This is a terrible father. He is terrible. Look at his child, not properly wrapped. That's what I was, I'm like, who, who's, who, who, who? Somebody's going to say that to me. I was just, oh, man, this is bad. This is bad. I thought I'd, I'd let me take off my jacket and wrap her and you know and all that. She's a, she's gonna be three now. She made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep him alive every yeah, day and then do it, it again. <laughs> you know, so I was yeah, so yeah, I think that negative thing is always there, but you just have to remember that uh it you it shouldn't own you. Mm. It shouldn't determine who you are and what kind of dad you're going to be to your kid. You know, because you always get great memories and great experiences with your child, and you know, and they, they are little people. They do their own thing. They're going. Yes, they have 
some of me in them, they have some of their mother in them, and they're still gonna have, they have some of their grandparents and their others, but they are, my, my daughter does her own thing, and you know, like yesterday she tickled me on my stomach, and that, mm-hmm. that, I'm, I'm a very ticklish there. Mm-hmm. And then today I tried to tickle her, but she said, that's not nice. <laughs> So yeah, well, I can't, can't, can't. Well, I have to come up with something now. All right, I respect you for that. I re- okay, we know the boundaries, and I, I let out set by boundaries too, so I respect that. I think it's. it's oh, yeah. sorry, go sorry, no, go, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think it's interesting the in this. Uh, I think for our the generation before us, and maybe two generations before us, at least in America, the kind of um, ideal of a father was that they were kind of like blasé, kind of not as hands-on mm-hmm. as maybe we're talking about being right now. But in this generation, we're more like involved. So we have the idea of like, maybe we're not doing this right. Maybe I'm screwing her up. I think the generations before us, they were more like, that's woman's work. Yeah. Let them do it. But here we are, four, four men <laughs> talking about being very hands-on with our kids. And I think that's a great evolution that's happened not only for men, but also for fatherhood and for our children. Yes. That I hope that they see that example and then keep it going moving forward, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I always use an example of, right, let's say, you know, you look at when, if there's photographs when you were born, okay, and if your grandparents were, were there, you know, you, mm-hmm. you look at our grandparents um, and they seemed old. Like, let's say they were yeah. in their 60s and, you know, they looked like little old ladies, you know, whereas, you know, I look at my mom who's, well, I'm not going to say all she is, but she's she, she, <laughs> but like good, good, she she good move. She's, she's had like you know she 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 doesn't look like you know the, like if you compare the the two photographs of the different generations, it there's like it looks like there's 20 years in difference between the two and them, right. you know. So and I think that comes back to the world getting smaller with the internet and yeah. been able to look up things and you know you think back at their generation where you know. Uh, like in Ireland, for example, right? So, <clears throat> like, if you're sick in Ireland and you just upset stomach or something, the old wife's tale was that okay, I'll put on some Seven Up or some Sprite. I'll just leave it, <laughs> wait till it goes flat, and then when it goes flat, then I'll give it to you, and that will make you feel better. You know, oh, okay. or like do you, yeah, that, these like old wives' tales. That's, that, like, that's a little passed, bit different you know? from the Seven Up tale. <laughs> yeah. I know. But like these, these things are passed down, and and versus now, like I'll just go on the computer and I'll see, oh, the best thing for upset stomach is is. Lemon juice, whatever. I don't know, but right. but but it's it's everything's at our fingertips now, as opposed to before, where they're just trying to figure out. You know, talk. You're talking to another parent. You meet the player. Hey, what do you do? Oh, I do this. Oh, okay. And then you try it, and then yeah. that gets passed down generation. But like you said, like I remember having a joke with one of the guys I used to work with a couple of years ago, and his, you know, he had two girls, and he was just having a, a boy, and he had said that he, uh, when his son was born, he was gonna call him boy. <laughs> and he was going to, and he was like, come in here, boy. And, and he's going to be a stern father. And, oh, dad, I got second place. In the, oh, second place. Oh. Why not first? Yeah. You're the but first no, like, loser. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> but, just, like, but he was only, he was only joking around. But, like, you, you do think of that, those stern, you know, I think of a story, like, you know, when, when you think of people that were in, say, the Korea War, for example, you know, and, and these things that they live with. And they get home from work and, oh, dad, dad, do you want to play with me? And then the mother is always like, no, 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 let him, just let him. Do was, you know, he got home from work, he's been working all day, rather than, now, I can't wait to see my daughter when I come home. She right. runs up and gives me a big hug, and, and, you know, we go for a walk around the block or a scooter or go to the playground, and if it's only half an hour, 40 minutes, it still makes, that's, I look forward to that every day, yeah. Yeah. you know, so... Yeah. You know, I learned the hard way not to Google too much, though. I, have yeah, to say. I, I was yeah. going to bring that you up. Know, <laughs> <laughs> um, my, do- my daughter loves to, like, tap tap the, the table. Well, that's a sign of autism. Mm-hmm. Like everything uh, on the internet is a sign of uh-huh. some, something. Yeah. Oh, I have a cold. Oh, you're, you have cancer. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I still do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's a good point to take a quick break and we shall return back shortly with more fun stuff about being a dad. Hi, everyone. Your host, Raphael Harry here. I can't believe we have gone past our one year anniversary of doing White Label American. I've had the privilege of speaking with some amazing people, sharing their modern day immigrant stories. And you've allowed this Nigerian immigrant to share parts of his immigrant journey through this podcast. Also, one of my goals of this podcast is breaking down artificial walls that keep people from getting to understand each other. Based on your wonderful feedback over the last year, I think we have done a decent job in breaking down some of those walls. We would like to continue and expand on this mission 
but we need your help. I've had an amazing time creating and producing episodes for this show largely on my own. We have a lot of ideas for new and exciting content to expand upon the mission, but we need direct support from you, our listener, which is why we have created a White Label American Patreon page where you can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining contributor where you can get access to exclusive content. Help me interview upcoming guests by submitting questions and even have the chance to sit down with me for a one-on-one conversation either virtually or in studio. So if this podcast means something to you and if you really love this show, think about becoming a sustaining contributor and donating by going to patreon.com slash white label American POD. Thanks for listening and for the privilege of your company. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. So now let me see. Well, this question might not be fair to Rodney because he, you're, well, you know, your kid is um, a year old. So there, there, there's stuff which you're already noticing by now. So yeah, yeah, you should still be able to answer this question. All right. So uh, what's the coolest thing about your kids? I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Um, I think her love of music seems clear already. Um, when she was just a few months old, that was the only thing that would get her to, you know, stop crying. Um, even now, she, she, you know, she rocks a little bit to all sorts of music. So, um, Is there a particular one that she reacts to? You know, anything with a good beat. Okay. Um, and I tell my wife, you know, in, in Ghana, <coughs> if you don't know how to dance, everyone laughs at you. Every party requires you to dance. Um, so... You know, that's that's one thing I can't wait. You know, when she's walking and you know moving around, it'll be fun to da- have dance parties. Um, but she seems to to groove to music, which which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's one way. I, was, I know I used to have that. Uh, it's a joke, but uh, he has to be like, uh, if I have a child and the child ain't down with music, I'm gonna be like DNA test. Uh, we're going to Mori. We're going to Mori. That's the only reason why I would go to Mori. Like, uh, I have a child. My child don't don't dance music. That why yeah yes that's why I'm here. <laughs> Maury, we got Maury show. <clears throat> like that that's my only reason for coming here. Don't, this child it can't be my family. Everybody like music. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh uh, right, well, well I want to go next. I mean I, I my daughter has a great sense of humor. I think she's uh, jovial is a good way to put it. She's very happy. Uh, it can be a little problematic. She likes. Um, playing pranks on people and playing pranks on her father. Well, um, I wonder where often. she got it from. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder too. Has anyone uh, met Cesar? <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. She's just really, ha- she's happy. She's just happy. Uh, y- you know, she takes things in stride. What's a good way? I'm trying to find an example. You know, I'm a big professional wrestling fan. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I like we, be- before the pandemic, we used to go to all these local shows and like little gyms here in Brooklyn. And you gotta she, take me to one of those. Yeah, I definitely have to. Once, once everything starts again, um, she loves seeing all the colors and and the people doing all the flips and the and the and the women with their, you know, colorful costumes and I, it's. She's just a really happy kid who notices things and doesn't see the the bad side of things. Is it because she's seven? It's possible. Yeah. Is it because she's had a good upbringing? I hope so. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's that's the coolest thing about her. She's just a really happy, jovial kid. Yeah, same with me. Like, I think she's she's very friendly and she's very confident. And she, she'll be in the playground and uh, she'll be running up to kids. Hi, what's your name? And, and she'll want to talk to them and then she'll make friends with them. And then she won't see them. And then six months later, she'll be like, oh, there's Milo. And then yeah. she'll remember Milo and want to go and play with Milo. And that's, you know, I think, you know, she she's, yeah, just a friendly little kid. And, and like you said, she's happy. And, and, you know, you kind of touched on something earlier that I want to talk about is that, you know, about um, teaching, like about t- t- your daughter tickling you. Mm-hmm. And about how, you know, you want to teach them that it's their own body. And, you know, you don't have to give anyone a hug if you don't want to. Or if 
granny's leaving. Oh, give granny a kiss. Give granny a kiss. And no, I don't want to give granny a kiss. Like you don't teach that in them to, to know that it's their own body and they don't have to do what other people want them to do. And especially the three of us have girls, you know, I want to teach her when she gets a bit bigger. Yeah, I have a girl too. Sorry, for excuse me, Rafa. Yeah, you're, you're, sorry, host. Excuse me. <laughs> Beg your pardon. <laughs> you know, we're the talent here. Come on now. <laughs> so uh, uh, it was uh, uh, no, no. Like I like I want when she gets bigger. I want to teach her, you know, ballet. I want to teach her soccer, but I also want to teach her judo or boxing or something mm-hmm. so that she's able to, you know, and be confident and know that that there's going to be people that are going to try and manipulate her or go, yeah. going to try to to, you know, and. But have that bit of sense of humor and that, you know, I'd use that line on everyone. Like that that kind of banter back and forth, a, a quick wit is something that I want her to have because, mm-hmm. and again, not to take everything at face value that something seems too good to be true, it normally is. And, and But again, it's your own but body. I, 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 I have a feeling that your daughter will be, I think she, she, she she's on her way there. You met her yesterday. You know? I met her yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she was, that yeah. was one of the first things she asked me, what's your name? I was like, you will met before. And you be, I, I, I don't think the first time she met me, she asked me, what's your, what's your name? Yeah. But yesterday she asked me, what's your name? I was like, all right. Yeah, we, we, yeah. I see you more lively now. But she was always, she's always been lively. But the fun, fun thing is that when I met Cesar's daughter for the first time, I said, Hala Madrid. And she responded, Hala Madrid. I give uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that kid. I almost disowned her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare she? <laughs> the betrayal. Yeah. <laughs> she's learned. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Has she chosen the team? Uh, she, she got no chance. My team. She was forced. She was forced into Valencia. And it's funny because she, I went there in 2019 and I bought um, a jersey, you know, and things like this. And she's like, "How come you didn't buy me one?" And I'm like, "Cause you never watch with me. You're a la Madriding people." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have got a Madrid jersey, but nah, nah. That, that's one thing I didn't uh, try to force on Clara, though. Like. I'm like, uh, we will mostly watch Bundesliga since yeah. Dortmund is the biggest team in our area. But uh, Munster has a team too. But I don't know where Munster is. I have a Munster jersey though, oh, nice. which my in laws got for me. I wouldn't have paid one for it myself. <laughs> 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 but I like Munster's team for what they represent. You know, they're, they're like one of the most active teams against racism in uh, oh, the whole cool. of Europe, actually. So, um, so I'm like, yeah, when she gets older, I will let her know about that. But um, yeah, for me, it looks good on me. You know? <laughs> so I keep that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, the, 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 when it comes to ownership of body, I think that's one, another thing that I enjoy in that Clara is able to say, no, I don't like it. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> that, that, there are times where it's like, how old are you? And there are times where I'm like, you know what? I'm proud of you. Hmm. You're able to vocalize this now and say, I don't like this. Don't do this. And at the same time, she's the, the person who, she's at playground. She sees the kids fall down. She's like, are you okay? Hmm. Are you okay? And okay, let's get back to playing. <laughs> she right. goes, That's why you say, yeah, I'm okay. And then she's the person who at home, she trips over, she, she like kicks me, and then she's going to be like, I'm okay. I'm like, I, I, do I not get you it? Kicked me. I'm like, I don't get the same treatment like other kids who, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, that's the one I need to like find a way to let her know that it's, uh, you gotta ask me if I'm okay too, you know? It, 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 except if, if when I fart, then that's when I get it. Am I okay? Are you okay? I'm like, oh, that, that's the time I get the question of I'm, if I'm okay. That's the only time. <laughs> yeah. That's when you care about me. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> So yeah, they 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 they're good trolls though. They're good trolls. They they know how to troll. So that, that's why I'm not too worried about the the quick wit, because I I think they already have it. There there's it's like they they pick it in their own way and then it just evolves and they, then before you know it, they go hit you with it and you go like man how old is this? You know what? You're lucky you, you might because I, I would just be like move into the neighbor's house. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, it's one of the most beautiful things about them. So, um, when it comes to, I always ask about food, and we, you guys have, um, um, Rodney, you've mentioned music, and well, not everybody has mentioned music, but I, I know where Cesar is going to go with music because mm-hmm. uh, I can. Cesar is like, now, uh, I've known Cesar for like a long time for a, for a good reason, but. <laughs> Okay, well, let's do music first, just because since Rodney has already mentioned music, um, when it comes to music, is there a song that you sing with your 
with your child that you know that defines you and your child or is there like a song that's like you two for both of you or you know um there's a there's a good few songs that she always likes to listen to um yeah but for the, the, when it comes to the two of you together you have a song that that if she's singing and she's like sing with me what's that song that you can sing with her she likes light it up by major laser Oh man, that, that, so she, that's she, that's that's a yeah that's she, a, she going big yeah going so big, uh, big that, that's you know we just we 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 just <laughs> yeah. we, we sing light it up to each other oh, all right and then uh, we like do like a little dance party in the little living room nah, I'm trying to picture Mark but, dancing I yeah it's not pretty it's uh, <laughs> but, but, but my wife will always uh, sw sweet child of mine okay. and she always sing it to her before she goes to bed right. and it's. Uh, I know it's like a Guns N' Roses and rock and roll, but when you actually stop and listen to the lyrics in it, it's really, really beautiful. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you can find a, an acoustic version of it, go just, play it. It's, 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 you, just, you just miss his life happy. Like, <laughs> that's his universe. You just walk Is it? Okay, <laughs> well, welcome to the Caesarverse, is it? Yeah, yeah. you know, it's. Uh, I definitely have an eclectic taste in music. I've tried to pass some of it on, but I know that it's not. Uh, probably appropriate for her, but we do rock out to Megadeth, <laughs> some I was for that. Slayer, you know, <laughs> things like that. And her mother probably doesn't like it as much. You know, my my daughter is seven now, going on eight. So there, she's now has her own taste in music, and it's not something that I have on my phone or iPad. But she watches TikTok with her friends. Some of her friends have like cell phones already, mm -hmm. which I'm yeah, totally right. against, by the way. Um, she, so she, she's will be somewhere, and she'd be like, "I heard that song on TikTok," or like, "I know that song," and she'll start singing it. Like she, she knows more about contemporary pop music than I do. They do. Mm. It's crazy how much she knows and how they. She can. She knows the words. <laughs> she knows the words. She knows all these dance steps. She's like, watch this, and she'll start moving and doing all the dances. That's how you know. We, that's like, how, how we know we are old. I know. I feel really old, and I'm like, what about um Guns and Roses or Megadeth or you know Metallica? What she'll be that? like, ah, that's your dad music. <laughs> I'm like, what? What's wrong with you, child? Oh, right, so, is coming. It's, it's, it's coming. inevitable. I bet. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when I when she was younger, I used to uh, do the feedings, especially when she was around one, one and a half years old, and I used to play Van Halen, yeah. and Frank Sinatra, and Elvis, Neil Diamond, Billy Joel, like just fun music that I could like mm. sing to, and sing to her. So she kind of has a recollection of like songs like jump and i jump you know so yeah. i think she remembers the jumping more than anything <laughs> things like that you know it was a uh, fun memories for me i mm -hmm. think and, and uh, watching her giggle and you know yeah m music is a great uh, fun thing and uh, to do with uh, clara and uh it's it's amazing how much stuff comes out from just a shared moment with her and uh was it? Uh, I think it was a few months, about two, three months ago. I don't know what was going on. I was just like, you know what? We never were able to watch Black is King together. It just seemed like she wanted to do something else when we were watching it. So it was just myself and Verena who watched it. So I was like, let me try again and see if she would like to watch. So she, for some reason, she was attentive this time. She's like, what is this? What is, mm. and she, as soon as it means, she's like responding. I see her doing her. You should get. I want. I want. I want to dance. And she go. Oh, you don't have to tell me you want to dance. You can go dance. <laughs> and she's dancing. And then I was like, okay. So you responded to some songs. I noticed the songs that she responded to. So I'm like, all right. Uh, My power, which was interesting. Uh, that that was like the main song she responded to. So I played that song like maybe ten times that day. And she was like, My power. So that song. Ugh. She's doing her dance. And she <laughs> she has this dance moves she does. And it's like, and she has a very serious face when she's doing it. And I'm like. I, I can't. I, I've never seen Beyonce dance like that, so I can't tell. If it's are you? Or is this your official entry into the Beehive? Or <laughs> I can't tell. But uh, she just went. She, she, and she just be there. Play the game. Um, yes, ma'am. Play the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> boss. <laughs> play the game. And then um, one night, uh, I don't even know why I didn't. Because like um, before. We go to before she goes to bed. I put on a movie, you know, do family time, watch one movie. And instead of a movie, I played Queen. I was like, Oh, let, let me see, let me check you out and see how you react to Queen. So I played Queen. 
And she just jumped and started dancing. That night she was dancing in her pajamas, dancing. And she was, I was like, wow. I have never pictured myself dancing to Queen. I just sing. <laughs> but she was dancing and she was just, I was like, wow, this child is everywhere. She's just everywhere. And then um, what, I've forgotten what this station is called on YouTube. They have DJs. I actually got a guest through them. Um, man, I've forgotten why. I don't know. It just escaped my memory now. And one of the DJs that they had, they have DJs from around the world perform. And one of the DJs was in, uh, I think, Lebanon or somewhere in the Middle East. And it was a, a, a woman, the DJ was a woman performing. And she, and Clara was just like, ah, oh, just like as soon as that woman comes on and she's just, all the music that she's playing. And it's mostly like Middle Eastern funk. So it's, it's not like songs that you're popular, that you're familiar with over here, but the, the crowd never stopped dancing. It was a small room. It's almost like this space of the studio. But yeah, it wasn't like a big, big crowd kind of thing. And I just, and she would just be going with that. I'm like, I can't figure you out, man. I can't. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? If someone goes through my music um, library, you can't figure me out either because you'll exactly. find country in there. And <laughs> so I guess days I've played country for, I've played, um, what was the, 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 those women who protested against George W? Oh, the uh, Dixie Chicks. Dixie, Dixie Chicks. Chicks, yeah. Yeah, I played their new, their recent album. And she, Clara responded to that too. And I was like, uh, they don't respond too much to country because I don't want to ship you to Tennessee or something. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll draw the line somewhere because you can't go too far into country. I mean, yeah. I respect people who love country, but uh, you can't go too far. The, the, the country, the, there's a limitation to that. But um, in Nigeria, um, um, what's his name? The guy who died, uh, who sang The Gambler? Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers was huge in Nigeria. Kenny Rogers. Yeah, around Christmas time we get. I, I, what was it? Did, did, was country music big in Ghana? Uh, every Sunday, for some reason, coming back from church. Ah, country yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. most, I think really? it was the same in, in South Africa. I, I, I could never figure it out why why country I, I, music I, I, was I, Sunday. I, I, really I can't really understand. <laughs> I, I can't. But <laughs> that's how you get people of my generation who it's like, yeah, we just <laughs> get into country and like, why are we into country? Nobody can tell us. Why are people here in the country? <laughs> 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 Just give me the butter of uh, Jack Daniels. <laughs> it's for advertisement at home. I don't drink it. <laughs> so what about food? Well, uh, you know, when my daughter was younger, um, her mother is a nutritionist, so she would eat a lot of protein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that she's getting older, she's eating more carbs. But one of the things that we share together is seafood. Mm. So she likes oysters now. Okay. Oysters on the half shell. Mm. Okay. So that's one of the things that always astounded me when she was um, around six or six and a half when I first took her to an oyster bar. And she was willing to try it and really liked it. So now that's one of our things that we do together. Like on a little father-daughter date, we'll go have oysters. Mm. And it's actually pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, pasta is, uh, is, is her main <laughs> yeah. thing. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She can eat it for. I'd say that's uh, no. She's good. It's it's uh, as I said. Like you have little routines, you know. So whether it's oatmeal or boiled eggs or fried eggs and pasta, 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 pasta. And pasta. Uh, I I remember taking her to a play group when she was maybe I'd say maybe eight months old, and it was like a bunch of mums and dads at like a little. Uh, I think it was at the back of like a uh, like a kid store, and they had like. You know, maybe eight or ten kids there, and you just put them on the ground. And there's toys, and they can play with. And uh, I was feeding her. I had salmon, and I had uh, broccoli for. Her. So she's eight months and eating away. And all the parents were like, they're all in between six and a year old, and they all stopped and they're looking at me like, "How the hell are you getting her to eat that?" And I'm like, "Well, she likes it." You know, and I, I remember we we were in Galway in Ireland one time, but uh, my wife and I, and this is just she had just started eating at this time, and uh, we were driving around doing things around and then she had the mother of all like flip outs like she was freaking out and we couldn't do anything to calm her down we're trying to you know we're figuring let's let's just maybe try and find a restaurant or something and we're on the main street in Galway and if anyone's been to Galway it's a main street with pubs and restaurants on it and god we're gonna ruin someone else's evening if, if we're bringing this screaming baby in here so we go in and, and oh, this, oh there's a quiet room at the back perfect so let us in uh, can I get some bread or, or something just to okay and give her the teeniest bit of bread give it to her and stop so she was just hangry. <laughs> so that's all it was. We gave her a little bit of bread, a little bit of pasta, and she's 
boom, she's she's Bang. perfect. She's so it's it's no, but even when she's a really really good eater. But as I said, pasta that's all day, every day. Hmm. You know, Hallie, uh, we, we started doing this trendy thing called baby led weaning, um, which is you know from the age of six months, mm-hmm. where you just you don't you don't ever feed the baby because she she was you know eating breast milk primarily yeah but the idea is to just get them to like you know learn to use their like fine motor skills pick up like little pieces of food blah blah blah. okay um and so right now you know at a year and and a few weeks it's impossible to actually put food in her mouth she wants to hold it herself and eat it you know so we might have created a little monster here Hmm. because now that we're weaning her (laughs) off Hmm. breast milk you know now we're thinking okay well we need to get you to eat a variety of foods by yourself and encourage you to eat them. Um, but she's like her old man. Uh, she's a huge meat eater. Okay. I mean, she she eats the meat first before oh. eating anything else. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, she's like all zones in on the protein. Uh. Um, so it's, it's it's a fun way to teach them to eat. It's it's messy. Um, but you're also not doing the airplane into the mouth thing. Um, yeah, well, what's it called again? Baby led weaning. Baby led weaning. Oh. Led weaning. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing of it. I've heard of it. I don't know. It was called lead weaning. Yeah, oh, it, uh, it, it's 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 super trendy, and <laughs> you know sometimes I wonder if we're doing it to excess. You know, yeah. or, you know, are we just following the bandwagon? I of, guess twenty twenty. I guess it never occurred to me because I still remember uh, what gave us the idea to start trying solids with, um, as in solid food with uh, Clara, being that you know every t- morning when I had her in my arm. You know, damn, she was small, so I could hold out one arm and I'll peel tangerine with the other arm or I'll have a banana. And it got to a stage where I was eating, and you know, you feel when someone's always staring at you, so I turn around, it's like she's she like, <laughs> I see her mouth moving, like, hey, hey, um, I need I need some too. Are you always eating this stuff? So I was like, uh, one day I was like, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I should mash the banana. And as soon as I brought it to her mouth, I want just. Ate everything. I was like, "Wow, okay." Um, so I told her mom, and mom was like, "Yeah, well, we can start trying, you know, mashed bananas." And that was it. And um, she was, I, I, let me try and see. How old was she when she dropped the spoon? I can't even recall. I don't think she was. She was almost a year, but it was just one of those things where you you're feeding her, and I guess you're moving too slow. <laughs> and or I was having a conversation. Or yeah, I was on the phone or having a conversation. With, and I look at, before I turn my head, it's like the spoon was in her hand, and I'm seeing ah, ah, I'm eating, ah, food going everywhere. Cause like, man, what, what this guy, man? You supposed to be feeding me. I'm the, I'm the attention. Pay attention to me. Feed me. What, what are you talking to? Nobody matters. Give me the food. <laughs> Only me. And it was like, yeah, I was like, wow. Whatever I put in front of her, you know. And um, then the first time she tried fufu. I made fufu, I made peanut uh, stew, and I was, it was for myself and Verena. That's who we were eating, and then we gave our baby food. And we're both eating our food, and it's like she looked at her food, looked at her mama's plate, looked at her father's plate, like, what the hell did they take I am? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I eating this green stuff? And everybody has two different colors in their plates. Yeah. And I don't get... And it looked, I start seeing the hand going like past her food. <laughs> she's coming, <laughs> like, she's trying to reach my plates. Like, I was like, wow. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't make it spicy, but um, I don't know. You, you, want, you want to try fufu? Okay. And as soon as I put it in my mouth, I'm, 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 I was like, this, this mm. child, there's no break with you. You just yeah. you, you eat everything. And <laughs> so since great. then, she started. And then there are days when I was like, okay, um, I think she was past a year old. And, she seemed to be eating everything I put in front of her. So I said, okay, I, let me try coconut rice. Make coconut rice, which is, you gotta get coconuts, very labor intensive. Did all that, place in front of her. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, man, that broke my heart. Cause I was like, woo, that girl, I, had to go, I went to the butcher, got goat meat, did everything. I was like, this is it, man, I prepared it. And first thing she looked at the plates and I'm straight up, nope. <laughs> Like, is this a joke or something? No. You should no. Oh wow. Uh you've never said no to food before. <laughs> that was the first time. It's like is it like the food don't taste good or no. It's just no. It's just no. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna eat. I don't wanna eat. That's it. And I was like, man, this is this is what a real heartbreak feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then, yeah, so now she's more, uh, I think her favorite thing is also pasta. Yep. And yeah. 
But there are days where, you know, I'll, I'll have um, fufu or I'll make some um, Nigerian stew or whatever. And or even if you jollof rice. And she just gonna be like, she won't eat it that night. But it, the next day, I want jollof. I want jollof. I want, and she just gonna be like holding you. I want jollof, shaking you. I want jollof. Like, hey, baby. <laughs> So somebody sees me like, you don't feed this child? You don't need to call child protective <laughs> services or what? <laughs> don't embarrass me in public. <laughs> like, okay, I, I get you your love. I need your love. I need your love. Like, you just thought about it. And, you know, yeah. even, even when I took her to go play soccer, you know, she's um, been taking her for months now. And, you know, because she kicks the ball out, all, all out in the house. And like, okay, maybe she might have fun with other kids. She was like, no, I don't want to play. You get to the park. She's like, I want to play. I'm not coming out. I'm just gonna stay in my stroller. So she never played. Wow. Four weeks went by, and then the fourth week was like almost towards the end. She comes out like, okay, I kick the ball a little bit, and then she gets in front of the goal. I'm like, okay, take one last kick, score mm. the goal. And she's about to take the kick, and it's like, it's like something sparks in her brain, and she just turns around, and starts running towards the stroller. So I'm like, hey, what? Hey, wait, wait, score the goal, wait. Mm. And I get to the stroller, she's like, salami. So <laughs> I say, what? I want salami. How? Who does? You about hmm. to score a goal and Salami just pops in. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. No more playing soccer anymore. It's like Salami. That's what I was want. I didn't bring Salami, but no, I just think I want Salami. I'm like, we're in a Prospect Park. We're not in the house. You salami. Better go, you better go hmm. get some. Salami. <laughs> I'm like, man. Yeah, with food. Yeah. It's, yeah it's. She's never done that with pasta. That's the funny thing, though. She's never been like, well, we're far away from home. I want pasta. No. She doesn't do that. <laughs> Any other thing. <laughs> ah. So, uh, let's begin to wrap up. Um, appreciate you giving me your time. Oh, there's one question I should have asked in the first part. But um, before I get to the rounding up part, you know, we all come from diversity in one way or the other. But, you know, do you have any plans for dealing with diversity or, and Eventually, when racism pops up to your child, you know, when your child starts to ask those questions, uh, do you feel like it's something that you don't think about now and you say it's going to be in a little bit? But it's more like for Caesar since he has the oldest kid. Yeah. I, well, it's it's definitely come up. You know, when everything happened last summer, um, her best friend is a little black girl. And the questions, like... Why would anybody hate her because of the color of her skin? You know, why would something like that happen? I thought the police were good, not bad. And you, it's, it's, a, it's tough to explain. It's tough to sit them down and go, by the way, you're also multicultural. You know, your father has darker skin than your mom or, or you, you know. Because she, when, when, uh, when she was younger, she used to call me brown. Mm. You, how come you're brown? And you're, you look different than like I do. You know, and it's like, well, your dad is Latin, you know, so are you. That's our culture. That's who we are, you know. Yeah, racism is tough. It's last summer was very difficult watching the protests. We protested together. You know, she marched with me. Um, she held up little signs and stuff. Black Lives Matter and all this kind of stuff. She, I think she took it really to heart. You know, why would someone dislike my best friend? Yeah. She's such a great little girl. Why would why would somebody hate her? Why would someone dislike her? And I, I haven't I haven't come up with an easy answer to be honest. I don't I it's it's very difficult to answer those questions. It's very difficult to be like, so this is what happened in American history. She can't grasp it. She's yeah. too young. Mm -hmm. So it's you, you just say some people just are you know, silly or they have really weird ideas about what humanity is and them being better. Just don't think that way, you know, for yourself. You can see that we live in a very diverse community and there's no reason for it. And I'm, I'll tell you right there, it shows you that racism and things like this are taught. They're not, they're not biology. They're taught. Yeah. Because these kids don't see color. You, your kids, I'm sure, they go to the playground. They don't see color. They just see other kids to play with. I, I'll, I, I think I told a story when I was on before, but I'll, I'll tell it again in that uh, I used to coach uh, like soccer when, you know, a couple years ago and there was one, there was two Carls um, that, that were playing. One was a little black kid, one was a white kid. Uh, one had red boots and one had blue boots. So we're playing and whatever and uh, one of the little kids comes up to me, a different kid comes up and uh, I was like, oh, uh, uh, 
Carl is uh, got hurt. And I was like, oh, wh- which Carl got hurt? And then he was like, oh, the one with the red boots got hurt. You know, it wasn't the black one. It wasn't the white one. Right. It was it was the red boot Carl, you know. So I another s- story is that when I was, you know, young playing soccer, you know, maybe six or seven years old, um, obviously it's more religious, but like a, a Celtic and Rangers, you know. Mm, so yeah. obviously Rangers being the, the you know, the the Great Britain and Union and, and, and uh, you know, Protestant leaning versus Celtic, which is more Catholic, Irish kind of team and uh i used to play for a team in the in in the local team in the park was called bushy park rangers just happened to be the name no affinity with anything ranger just happened to be the the name and uh again i'm five or six years old and that's the team i play for and another little kid comes up to me, oh who do you support celtic or rangers and i was like i i've no i'm not exposed to this like you say it, it's you know uh it's something that you're 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 you know you're taught so yeah. Who do you like, Celtic Rangers? Oh, well, I guess I play for Rangers, so Rangers. You know, I don't know who Celtic Rangers are. And he punches me. And then uh, he's like, oh, you're a Protestant and you, you you know, you're you're loyal to the Queen and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because I, I was never exposed. My, it wasn't like my, my parents were like, you don't, you know, British people are the worst and, you know, mm-hmm. oh, you know, you know, IRA and all this kind of stuff. That's not something that, that, that was, you know, that needed to be talked about, you know, but... Mm-hmm. Again, it was still that. Now, obviously, it was his brother or his dad or someone in his life had said, no, don't, people from Rangers or, or Protestants, you don't deal with yeah. them. You know, you're against them. And that's a perfect example, like you said, leaning back to it's taught. It's not, it's not, uh, listen, I don't care what you do. So long as you're a nice person, you know, uh, and, and do your thing, doesn't matter where you're from, right. you know. Yeah, yeah but that is, there's a way we, we, we shape kids without even realizing that we are, we are shaping um, our children. And that's why the examples that we set is very important. I, yeah. I, I think it's cultural as well. You know, you, you think of, you know, Japanese culture and, and, and gaijin, so people who aren't, you know, you talk about wrestling and, 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 and knowing that, like, if you're not Japanese, you're not really accepted within the workplace or the culture. You know, you think of, of um, you know, uh, in, in in the cowboy movies and stuff, what what do they always the the Hispanic the cowboys? What do they call the gringos? Isn't that right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so again, there's there's always there's always something culturally these things, and I'm I'm hoping that, you know, similar to parenting, je- racial t- tensions and things will start to change over the next generation, the next generation. You know, but again, there's always those those pockets of people that are just horrible people, and and you know, it's like using religion as a shield to justify shitty behavior. It's like using the military. You know, as as a shield for justifying your shitty behavior. Oh well, I was I was in I was in the military, but okay, like I I you know, I worked with where the guy who was in the Marines for twenty seven years, and uh, you know he always wore this insignia mm-hmm. ring with with the Marines on it, and he would he'd be you know walking through Times Square, and there's always you know guys always a veteran and you know holding signs and stuff. So there was one guy for whatever reason he went over to him one day. Oh, you served? Yeah, yeah, I was in. Was in the Marine Corps and da, da da da. He's talking to him and he's about to give him some money and he's like, "Oh, I like your ring. What what, what is that? You know." So if you're in the Marines, you'd know exactly what the right. insignia was. So he's just some bullshitter just trying to to you know use the military when when there wasn't a, a thing to it. So again, I think it's all linked together, but I think it's just trying to be a nice person and and um, teach that to my daughter and and yeah. you know the next generation behind us. Yeah. Sorry for taking over there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Got, it's a heavy topic. Um, yeah, I have a question. I you know. My daughter was born in May of last year. Some part of me selfishly... A good month to be born, by the way. Yeah, oh, right, oh right gosh. before the summer. Um, a, a, a selfish part of me thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel lucky that I don't have to have difficult conversations right now because I can only imagine... I mean, how do you explain, you know, to, to a child? And, you know, I, I think it, you have to be a, a, a developed adult to fully grasp, you know, all the nuances. Um, mm-hmm. And it's very easy to, to misunderstand when you're young, when you're, you know... Um, talking about racism, you know, I, I thought, I think to myself, you know, part of my duty as a dad, you know, going back to the creating a, a protective boundary around my daughter is to sort of, you know, uh, you know, keep Santa Claus alive for as long as possible, you know, have her world be full of, you know, just positivity, at least for the early, you know, early stages, because that's something I had. Um, and I was lucky to have that growing up in a country where 99.999% of us are black, you know, it wasn't a thing that I, I had to think about or deal with. And it was a luxury yeah. um, that not everybody gets, depending on where you grow up. Um, so, you know, on th- but on the one side, you don't want to raise a naive person mm-hmm. who, yeah. you know, will be, 
you know, you, you want to prepare them for the world that they're going to meet and the people, you know, that are not great people out there. I'm a little less optimistic about human nature than, than, than you guys, perhaps. I think that there's a natural tendency to like people who are like us, to like people who like the same soccer team, to like people who have the same skin tone, to like people from the same country. Um, so even if it's not taught, I think that that's in, I, I, I'm pessimistic. I think it's innate. I think the challenge is, you know, in spite of that natural tendency to like our own, how do you override that by being a, a, a conscious human being, you know, and, and, and accept other people into your life? Um, and, you know, my, my daughter being, you know, my wife is Caucasian. My daughter being mixed, you know, that, that has a whole, you know, layer of complexity as well because, yeah. you know, I know from other mixed people that they feel like they, are, they have a foot in both worlds. They're not really sure where they fit. And it's a, it's a separate identity of its own with unique challenges too, which I, I, I you know, neither of us, you know, neither my wife nor I will may perhaps be very well equipped to help her deal with. So, uh, yeah, it's something I think about a lot. I, I don't know. I don't I know I don't like what's happening in the schools right now in New York City. I, the thing that scares me the most is my daughter being five, going to kindergarten and the teacher saying, you know what? This world is full of racists and you are going to encounter racism. And, you know, I, I don't think that's the right approach. I think it's, no. it's it comes from a good place. But I wouldn't want a teacher. I, I, the, the thing that scares me the most, is my daughter coming back home and saying, like, Dad, why do people hate me? Mm. Um, I don't think that that's a good thing to internalize as a young person. How, how would you like the teacher to go about it? I would say most people are good people. And you should be a good person. But there are some people out there who are just bad people. Yeah. And they might not like you because of the way you dress or because you're a woman or because you're black or because you're mixed or whatever but um, it's hard <laughs> it's hard I mean, <laughs> I mean i could go for an hour on this yeah this it's is so like hard it's, like, it's you, know, you know i mean I'll, i have to do a part two with uh <laughs> parents of mixed children and then i made I made the mistake of uh watching a world war ii netflix documentary when she walked in one day and then she was watching uh you know adolf hitler speaking you know and he's so charismatic the way he would use his words and his hands and his body to talk uh regardless of how awful he was i'm just mm -hmm. saying that he was a charismatic speaker oh, he was that, that a was great order he was that's him. just the truth and she's like who's that and i'm like well you, you you will learn about him one day you know when you get older and you'll you'll see he was a very influential person but now we're at the bookstore and she'll see like his picture or she'll see like the entire world war ii section at barnes and noble and she'll be like who's that guy that's the guy that you told me i'm like oh boy i don't want to get into this this is not something i want to discuss at a bookstore <laughs> yeah at the bookstore but it's but but you know again you don't want to raise them to be naive yeah. but at the same time i don't want to get into the whole minutia of like what happened mm -hmm. and the same thing with racism i don't want to get into every single aspect of what happened in this country and is still happening to this day yeah. um, it's a heavy it's a heavy burden even for adults it's it a very heavy burden. We, we it's carry it for the rest of our lives. And yeah. yeah. We try to, that's the reason why we fight the fight so that the next generation don't have to, you know, carry the burden. But it, it's, 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 it's going to be there. It's a fight I don't want to fight. I don't, that's the thing. I don't, know, I don't think I, don't I should any, have to. I don't think any of us should have to or would want, wanted know? this fight. We don't, I don't think we wanted it. It should have, you know, if... Every, if we were a perfect world, it probably would have ended over 100 years ago. This, this, this yeah. fight would have been solved a long time ago. But I don't think it's ever going to die. That's uh, me. No. no. And the, in my own way, the best I can do is prepare my daughter to be able to handle it uh, the best way possible. Right. Uh, for me, what I would not like to see is... Um, a situation where my daughter grows up to be the person who is now you know, from an oppressed group that says, you know what, it's time for me to now be the one oppressing others yeah. and I'll be in the forefront. And uh, yeah, that, that would be like the biggest, that's what I would consider, that's, I would consider a failure for myself if I see something like that. Yeah, yeah so I wouldn't want that. But um you know, she goes to the playground. You know, there's stuff that I don't like. I don't like you touching my daughter's hair without her permission, without our permission. I give you, I, I'm not going to give you permission to touch my daughter's hair. Like, why do you need to touch my daughter's hair? It doesn't make sense to Who's me. Who's touching her hair? Oh, the people just. But, but like her parents? 
Other parents, they like doing that. Like, oh, she's yeah. so cute. Like, wh- wh- why is that your the first instinct? Like, your hand was got to go into my daughter's hair. Like, why is that? <laughs> so, like, there's times where she just gives you that look. Like, how dare you? Like, that's the look on her face. And I'm like, good. Mm-hmm. Give it to them. And I'm like, yo, they're like, oh, she's, she's, she's feisty or something. I'm like, why is that the first that came out of your mouth? That she's feisty. Feisty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If, I, if, I just, <laughs> like, if I just walked up to you word. and yeah. touched your hair, mm-hmm. what would be your reaction? You'd be like, that's an assault, you know? Right. <laughs> so why would you just walk up someone's kid and just go straight into their hair and touch their hair? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. But the fact that a lot of people still can't see that as an issue. And, you know, so I have to tell my daughter, like, no, if someone's coming for your hair, it don't matter if you've seen that person smiling at your father or your mom, withdraw from them. Don't let them touch your hair because it begins with, that's a barrier. That's how it starts because you allow them to become comfortable with touching your hair like, even as an adult, the people who, the last place I walked at, there were people who just came out, hey, how you doing, man? Tap me on my head. I'm like, what the? <laughs> don't tap me on the head. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're not that cool. And even if we're cool, I don't think that would be the first way for you to greet me. Like, you just see me in the morning and just slap me on the head. Like, how you doing? Like, what? That is like, you know, and, but I have to be the cool black guy because you don't have to, you can't get angry, you know, that kind of thing, you know? Because they're going, oh, he's black, he's a veteran too. Oh, he got anger issues <laughs> coming up. So I have to add all that, you know, all that's in my head going up. And I'm like, ah, man, this is, but. Can I play uh, devil's advocate for a little bit? Sure. So, you know, sometimes it comes, I'm, I'm assuming it will come from a place of, you know, just curiosity, innocent curiosity, right? seeing somebody who looks different, has different ha- textured hair, wanting to... It can be a bridge sometimes, I think, right? Some of these questions about, oh, why is your skin color like this? Or why is your hair like this? Or blah, blah, blah. Okay. I, I think it can come I, from an innocent place. I, I, I can see how... I don't believe it comes from an innocent place because I've seen a different culture. I, uh, in, I've seen an example of a different culture. Huh. So one of my shipmates, when I was in the Middle East, his wife was Japanese. And um, she... he transferred first to Bahrain and then his wife came a few months later. So when his wife arrived, he was here, he was like, oh, they, they love black people a lot over there, almost to a fetish. And I was like, well, I don't understand mm. what that means. But it's like, oh yeah, there's some kind of fetishization of black people in some parts of Japan or all over Japan. And I, it started making sense later on when I realized how many black people who went over there were like, oh man, I ain't coming back. I don't want to leave the Navy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of the Navy. I won't come back to... United States because of the treatment we're getting from Japanese women. And Sounds nice. He's, uh, trust me, man. <laughs> even black, white, like they love Americans. That's why it's why they don't want to come back. And um, his wife, one time we were hanging out and his wife whispered to him and then he, he said, um, my wife would like to ask you a question. And don't please don't be offended. So I was like, what? I was like, is this like she wants to have, is this, I was single then, you know? So I was like, wait, is this like she's trying to get down with me or something? Is this like a kinky couple kind of thing? And she said, like, she just was admiring my eyebrows and she would like to touch them. Is it okay? Hmm. And I was taking her back. I was, I was like, that was not what I was thinking of, <laughs> but you know, but I was a pervert too, so, you know. But I was shocked that someone took permission, was asking for my permission before she did that. And I was like, well, okay, go ahead. And she, it was like a kid, literally like a child, just brushing. And he's like, oh, oh, are you sure? Like, so nice, so nice. Again, please. And then and I was like, I couldn't get it. Like, why are you so? And she was like, oh, so like people actually do surgeries to have like black people's eyebrows. And oh, what is, what? <laughs> and that, that was a whole <laughs> new world. I heard black people's eyebrows. I didn't, <laughs> no. I didn't know it was something. I, but she, <laughs> And she all her life she's been in Japan, grown wow. up there, um, Osaka, um, yeah, I think Osaka area she's from, and I was like, wow. But she 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 just moved back because she she couldn't even stay in the United States. It was too much for her. She couldn't adjust to life in America, so she moved back to Japan. But yeah, that that was. But she took permission. My in laws who live in Germany, the first time we went with the baby, they always asked for permission before they were doing so. And I, I got to a stage I was like, I'm not used to. The grandparents like ask him, why are you asking for permission? It's your grandchild. They're like, oh, no, no, no. It's your child. And we don't want to, you know, offend or anything. We, we, you, 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 it's your child. You and Verena decide how you want to raise your child. Yes, we are grandparents. We love our grandchild, but we still respect you. 
That's good. Mm. That's not very common. Yes. And no. I, 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 that, I, don't, that I, is, I don't have that issue, but but that, that isn't common. I was, you know, I was. That's one thing that made me like. Say, I was really proud that I got that family, and it made me know that it's possible for people to take permission instead of just going outright. Like, I'm yeah. going to pick because these are people who literally had the right to just go pick up the baby and you know do yeah, whatever, yeah. but they still took permission. I see. So I see. if the grandparents can take permission before doing anything. Why should a stranger just come up like I'm gonna go grab I, the hair? I, I, I see what you're up, saying. So, like, so it's, it's about it's yeah. about the permission, not necessarily the curiosity. It, okay. the, it, it begins in you, you see so many ways. They're little because it starts with little things, and when you let you allow that slide, it gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> and there are so many ways that you know racism is tied to bias, and it's all that we all have bias. But if I allow my little biases get bigger and bigger, then I become a sexist. I become a bigot. We know our good friend Don Zoro who. If you, if you guys see that guy, he just gonna be like, "Whoa, it's, it's a bit much." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I used to tolerate him for a while. Mm. But he's hardcore sexist, and he was like, "This is not, uh, you know, just, just let it slide." You know, he's just. Then, uh, yeah, it was obvious. This is, and then when the racism came out, you're like, "Oh, you know what? Actually, he had been he had been showing you who he was before. Mm. You just chose to allow that slide." But when you allow the kids, allow uh, people mess with their hair. People getting their space, yeah, yeah. Their assaults turn into something else. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. A... Yeah, I, I, I was, hmm. I was gonna say that exact, that exact point. Like you said, it's, it's culture. It's like you see someone that's different from you. There's a way to ask, and then there's a way to just go ahead and do it. Yeah. You know, and then growing up, then is your daughter then gonna be think it's okay for people to touch her? Right. You know, right. like we were talking about, like it's her body, so she has permission to to do it. Like I look at it, it's my job to protect her until she's eighteen. When she's eighteen, she can do whatever, whatever she wants. You know. But again, just to teach her that it's her body. No one has the right to touch her. And as I said at the start, like, I'll give your granny a hug. No, I don't want to give granny a hug. Okay, don't give granny a hug. Yeah. You know, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to see you for whatever. I, like, actually, I was one of know? those who hmm. used to say, go give your granny a hug. And yeah. my parents were like, it's fine if she doesn't want to give a hug. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know what? That's true. It's fine if she doesn't want But to. That, those sound like extremely emotionally intelligent people rather than people who let their, their emotions get the better of them, which... I feel like in this country now, that's what we see every day. And, and uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah. The fact that you're telling me that someone came up to your daughter and was just touching her hair just because they oh, decided seen, they have the right yeah. to do I've it. I've seen it multiple times. Like, yeah. that, that, I've that, seen it multiple I, times. You know. I think I, about, I overlooked the yeah. dimension of not asking permission. I thought yeah. it was sort of like, hey, can I touch your hair? But, but unsolicited, um, just touching that. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that I won't, yeah. Yeah. That I won't try. Like, you know, my, I, my friends, really, my friends, they, they, can I, they, you know, if she runs into you, that's different. But yeah. if the people like, you know, one another way I know that it's possible, kids can communicate with each other. And then you start seeing like when a kid does something forcefully and another kid tells the other one, I don't like it. And you see the other kids still pushing. You watch the parents' reaction. There are some parents where you see the difference where some parents be like, no, that's not, that's not nice. I'm yeah. sorry. The parent comes. There's some parents who be like, they don't care. They're not mm. paying attention. Like you are taking territory. Go ahead. Get, the kids are just being kids, you know. They're kids being kids. I'm like, that. That you already the wiring the pro. You started wiring the child. Yeah. You yeah. started wiring the child in a certain way because you. That's why. That's why the playground is a good social experiment because mm -hmm. you, you see different things and you're like, hmm. I'm like, okay, notes to myself. You don't bring your child in mind. I'm, uh, that, yeah. I put up that wall between us. Right. Mm -hmm. Fine. Go do like there, there's there's one kid in the playground who uh, she's a lot bigger than the the other kids and they were playing in the sandbox one day. And uh, my daughter had like a, a son hat on, and uh, you know you just get a vibe off of kids sometimes or, or people sometimes, mm -hmm. and you're like, like you said, it's biases, and you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm I won't won't say anything. And then uh, I could see the girl like doing something with the sand, and then my daughter was pretty close to her, and she just picked up the sand and bow like threw it right in her face. She had it in a shovel, and she whoosh, like threw it right in her face. And I knew there was some like you know you just get that spider sense that something's mm -hmm. off. And it, I got it, and I was like. Luckily, she had her son hat on, so it caught everything, so it didn't it didn't get in her face. But anytime I see that kid in the playground, she, I don't let her go near the sandbox because I don't let my daughter go near the sandbox because I know I've got that sense that. And again, Imogen will probably run over and play with her and wanted to play with her. But okay, okay, she had her son hat, hat, hat on. She might not have her son hat on the next time. She gets sand in her eyes, and it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, or is the kid going to hit her, or or these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it's like you you like you say you want to you, you want to give them that you know awareness of sensing danger you know and 
there's a few things running what you said like so I, I work in hotels and, and I've worked in them a long time so I'm used to dealing with people I'm used to dealing with body language and oh, yeah. and, and <laughs> cultures and and you know I, I worked in a French hotel in the Sofitel and it's uh you know the the it's it's French people like French people Irish people like Irish people you know it's 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 that natural pull towards your your own culture I, I don't think that's that's a bad thing I just think it's a comfort thing you know mm -hmm. but at the same time it's not a bad thing to me as an Irish person want to know about French people you know but a French person you know would have would prefer, prefer to talk to a French person because they know that they can their concerns yeah, or, or, or yeah too. but like hmm. the, the, the amount of relief that I'd see from, from people being like who parlez-vous français and then uh, I'd be like oh I, I don't but my colleague goes oh pff. and then they, the relief is there hmm. you know just like with you know people from, from Spain or, or, or South America who come who who Again, they're, you can see they're trying, but they don't have that confidence in their English. And then, oh, d oh, this is my colleague who speaks Spanish. Oh, okay. And then that confidence. But you need to be careful with that because I can't just say to, to you, Caesar, oh, uh, oh, do, do you want me to speak Spanish to you? And then you're like, what are you talking about? Like, I've lived here for 20 years. I know how to speak English. Like, you, you're insulting me. That so, happens all the time. You know? <laughs> Where people are like, yeah. like, hola, or they start yeah. talking to me in Spanish. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, thanks. You know, you yeah. go back and yeah. like, Actually, oh. I, I had that last week. <laughs> that happened to you last week? <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, dude, I, yeah. I speak English. My mom, yeah. who's from Brazil, yeah. she would get that often and she hated it. Yeah. She's and again, it's 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 you're you're just assuming that because of the way I look that I can't speak English right. properly, you know? Yeah. And I'm I'm like I'm an immigrant as well. I've been living here for thirteen years and the only difference between we look different, you know, and and you know, but I'm never treated that way, you know. No. And I I'm an immigrant, there's no difference between between me and you, it just happens that that you know, physically we look different, and 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 the, there's a difference in the way it's treated. So again, I I think it's just again, it comes back to a lot of different things. I think we talked about a lot of stuff here. I think my main thing is is as I said, body autonomy. That's your body. You know, you do with it what you want, uh, but to learn how to protect yourself as well and sense danger. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, a big thing that I'm. we're trying to instill in our daughter now because now she's at the phase where she's very trusting of people that are older than her, yeah. especially of the opposite sex. Yeah. And that can be like, okay, look, you have to have the conversation with them. Like things that you can't talk about, here are things that you can talk about. And also just be very careful because <laughs> yep. there might be a time where I'm not there or your mother's not there. And you have to be able to discern between what's, good conversation and bad conversation and right now that's that's a like conversation a, again, you have to have another one you know when it comes to I'll, I'll, I'll finish on this one but it's uh you know there's a play school where uh there was a janitor that was in the play school and uh, all the kids had to hug the janitor every day <sighs> you know and it's like why these are the kind of like Rodney. I know you, you said you're hmm. you're you're overanalyzing certain things, and I don't want to give you another thing to overanalyze. But, it's, <laughs> but, it's, but, it's, but it, yeah, but it's one of these <laughs> things where where you know you 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 know trust is a big thing, and you have to trust that if you're you know dropping your daughter off at daycare or at whatever that that this person is trusting. And again, if you've got that natural spider sense within yourself that if something doesn't feel right, there's a reason that that's that's in you. Whether it's body language, whether it's it's energy, you know, I yeah. I, I, I don't know, but it's it's. Yeah, I, I just my, I want to end my part to saying that like you know if if something feels off, trust your gut and don't, yes. don't just and yeah. teach your teach your kids to feel that way as well. Yeah, I, I think that's a good place to um, nip it there, because it's that trust your gut is something that I think we wait until like what I, I'm used to is that we wait until the child becomes almost a teenager for them to start knowing that they have a gut that they can trust. But it's uh, it's something that is in them from an early stage, and when you don't trust your gut and you vocalize it, it's up to the we the adults to listen and hear the child and let them know that once you let us know that you, this is not you don't something does not feel right to you, I will listen to you, and I'll act on it hmm. because that's when something that's when if. Um, you know, we don't want something bad to happen to our kids. But let's say something unfortunate happens and they experience it or they witness it. They should be able to come to us. We don't want this situation where the kids, our kids have to go meet someone else, say, because our parents don't listen. Mm -hmm. They have to go look for someone else to mm -hmm. go 
tell what happens because that's a very big point he made about trusting your God. But the way I grew up is I never could go to my family and say, this is what happened. So there was stuff that happened to me as a child. I couldn't, it didn't even occur to me that I should tell someone in the house, this is what was happening. But if I did, it was like, you're reporting your senior, so that's a lie kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So all that is also connected. That's why racism is like a big, wide, you know, it's very wide and it shows you how damaging it can be because there's so many layers to it. But we're almost out of time. So unfortunately, <laughs> I can't go further than this. We can't fix so, racism today. Yeah, we can't <laughs> fix it today. But we, we, we can we can try with can a, try. a few beers, you know, <laughs> and barbecues on with that. So final question to wrap it up, you know, uh, wrap it up in a good way. What would you like to leave the audience with? You know, and uh, yeah, could be a line from a book you've read, could be a line from Megadeth, I know, if you probably go there. Or it could be a uh, mantra that you live by. I know where Mark will go with his. Or it could be just something that speaks to you, you know. Or something relating to fatherhood, you know, since it's for Father's Day, this uh, episode. I guess I'll go. Uh, the, so I, I think I touched on it when I started. So the, the way that my philosophy in life is is be kind and don't take shit, you know. And when I say that, it's like I, I if something's not right and you see someone being talked to poorly or downtrodden or in work or in, in whatever, like to be the first to say this isn't right, you know, and like you, you had said about your friend perpetuating, you know, talk sexist, racist, you know, eventually, obviously, it seems that you guys have now signed like this, this isn't right, you know. So yeah, it took us a while to get step, there. but mm -hmm. step I mean, up. I drank yeah. three beers from him. Yeah, though, but, like yeah. step up rather than stepping off, you know. And my, my second thing, more lighthearted, would be there's a show on Disney Plus called Bluey. Um, it's about a it's an Australian show. It's two little it's it's about two little girls that like little dogs, uh, and their their mom and dad, and uh, I think they're six and four, mm -hmm. and it's just a really wholesome, kind show with really good examples of parents. Um, you know, one episode that stands out to me is just that there's uh they're going to the dump and you know they're driving to the dump and and oh dad are you are you a good driver oh, I'm the best driver oh dad are you good at this oh, I'm the best at this you know they get to the dump he's throwing the stuff into the the dump and uh, one of the daughters sees her drawings that she drew for him uh, scriggles and and things like that but that he was throwing them away so then. It's now a case of you're not a good guy. You're not the best. You're the worst. You're throwing away my drawings I drew for you. So yeah. how is you as a parent? How do you deal with that when your daughter's coming to you saying that you're throwing away my drawings? Or you don't care about what my feelings, you know? So, you know, it's these are the kind of tough conversations they have on it. But it's a really, really it's only eight or ten minutes. But I, I can't oh, wow. stress okay. it enough. It's a really good wholesome Bluey. show. And it's Bluey. it's Bluey. Yeah. So, Bluey. Check right. it out. yeah, check it out. You can tag at Bluey in this podcast now. Yeah. Right? yeah. Disney, we need yeah. that Disney Plus money. <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> you know, for me, I guess what I'll leave folks with as 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 the the, the least experienced dad here is, you know, for, for those who are, you know, thinking about it, mm -hmm. just, you know, you know, come from somebody who's been it for for a year. Um, it's true that it's hard. It's true there's a lot of sacrifice. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about sacrifice, you know, in the last few months, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's part of being human. You know, we, whether you're sacrificing chickens for the rains to come like my granddad used to do, or, <laughs> you know, sacrificing your time, you know, for something better, you know, you, you give up something that is hard to give up. Maybe yeah. your free time, maybe your image of yourself as a Casanova, you know, going hitting up the clubs. Oh, yes. um, you know, maybe your body because you get the dad bod. Ooh, um, Friday sucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's why we do that. Um, but but it's it's for something better, and it just feels right. It feels right in a way that it feels good to be a dad. Um, I'm happy to say that it feels like I'm doing what I should be doing. Um, it's meaningful in a way that I don't think other other things in my life are. Um, yeah. So it's and a lot of parents may give you may tell the scary stories, and I think sometimes. Maybe it comes from a place of not wanting to bra to be bragging about what they have to people yeah. who don't have kids. Uh -huh. So almost like not making them jealous. That's why they talk about the hard parts. But it's 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 a lot of fun too. Yeah, I can't say it much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a it's a challenge, but it's a worthy challenge. I think it's the it's cliche to say, but it's probably the best thing that I'll ever do in my life. Um, 
this Father's Day also happens to be my birthday. So there's been a lot of like, you know, <laughs> thought, uh, introspection that goes along with that because I'm getting older. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. If anyone, like I said, like you said, if anyone's on the fence, I would say it's hard to say go for it because like <laughs> it's something you can't come back from. Yes. But it, I think it's, it's, it really is the best thing anyone could do. It's your, it's, you're raising a person. You know, you you give so much of yourself, but it's so worth it. Um, I'm lucky to have a really good partner that that's a really wonderful mother. Um, I am not married like you guys. I'm actually a single father. I was going to um, ask you about dating, but that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're out of time because I could go on and on for that too. <laughs> but um, it's you know, it's it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing. I am um, in no way have I ever been like you know this is i just wish i didn't do this i didn't wish i didn't stick around i'm very very happy that i stuck around and i'm grateful that i have the daughter that i have i'm very proud to be her father you know me too i'm grateful that i've got that i have and yeah that's that's just the best way to end it that's just the best way so you guys have anything you'd like to promote or any if people want to find you reach out to you is there any way would you like people to reach out to you? If not, that's fine. I'll cut this part out. <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you all coming on the podcast. Rodney, we have to fix a date and time to get you for your own immigrant Sounds story, which I know it's uh, going to be very exciting. So, um, Cesar, finally, you made it here. You know, <laughs> thank you for having me on. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. To everyone listening, don't forget to subscribe, like, five stars, positive reviews. Keep the love coming in. And thank you for the privilege of your company. See you next week. Thanks for listening to White Label American. If you enjoyed the show, we'll appreciate if you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. If you have any questions, comments, or have someone who will be a good guest on the show or you want to be on the show send us a message at whitelabelamerican at gmail.com and make sure to follow us on facebook and instagram at whitelabelamerican thank you for your support